I'm back with another installment of something old, something new, something borrowed, something blank. Hey everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my channel and my studio. Today, even though it's only the second episode of this series, I'm gonna mix it up because one of you gave me the best idea for the fourth item in the parameters. And that is whatever the heck I want. Someone said, Kathy, don't make it rhyme with blue. Do whatever you want in the blank spot. It's still going to work for you and you're gonna have a blast. And I'm like, you're a genius. So today we've got the parameters and the something blank. Well, you'll have to stick around to see what that is. My video is coming up next. So here's a look at the collection of products and my something old is a gel press. I have not used this thing probably in a couple of years. And so combining that with my something old, my Tim Holtz brayer, because I'm going to use a brayer. My something new is this die from Hero Arts. I saw this in a product re reveal, I think from my friend Dana Joy. And I, I ordered it right away because I just think this is a really, really cool die. So that's my something new. My something borrowed is this color palette right here. I have this website that I came across. I love it. I will link it below. It just has some good information on color theory and some fun palettes to try. And then my something blank is something that I kind of forgot about. Something very oxide-y. See, okay. I, I haven't used my oxides much lately. I think I forget about them maybe because they're behind me in my studio. I don't know, but I go through phases and these have not seen love in a while. I sure hope they don't need to be re-inked, but I am going to be using something, my blank oxide -y, okay? So that is a look at the supplies. Let's get started with using my gel press and making, making something that hopefully looks good. I'm gonna take my little gel press out. Boy, this is, yeah. It has not seen love. So this is different than the little, what are they called? The grip baths, right? This is, well, I don't know what this is made of, but the cool thing is, is that it will fit very nicely here on my glass mat. Now I have a piece of paper here. This is cut larger than I need, but hopefully, well, I'll be trimming it down. And what I'm gonna do is just sort of, I don't know, follow this, this little, uh, well, this thing. I'm gonna roll on, oh my gosh, yep, I can open it. There we go. I'm gonna do some brayering on of color. You know what, I wonder if I want my smaller brayer. I would, but I have no idea where it is. I have two sizes, but I think this will be fine. So I'm just gonna pick up some of this on here. Now, I don't know, there are many of you out there who may be really <laughs> adept at brayers. <laughs> that is not me. I do not really know what I'm doing, but uh, you know, that's why we give it the old college try. So something old, I'm going to just brayer on some color here, like that, like that. Now, I wish I had a better panel to, to roll off on, but maybe we'll just do this and we'll get some cool, we'll get some cool transitional color, all right? Color one, tattered rose. Now, we're gonna move on to the worn lipstick. I don't, yeah, I'm not gonna wipe this down. I, again, these are techniques that I am not very adept in. Something old. I do have, I feel like I have a video, and I'll be sure to pop a card up for you. Um, and I think it's one of my most viewed videos, and I'm pretty sure I'm using a brayer in it. It was from a couple years ago. All right, now I'm just gonna kinda go over this area like that, just kind of overlap. All right, well, we'll see. Anyway, a couple years ago, like, oh, that's kind of pretty. All right, we're moving on to the dried marigold. Now, how many of you have used a brayer and done this sort of thing? I, again, I feel like I'm mildly out of my depth, but you know, that's one of the fun things about card making is that we get to try things. Here we go, just right over here that maybe we don't really know what we're doing. And that's okay. It's kind of fun. Okay, go like that. I'm actually making something quite pretty there. All right. And we'll go on with the last one, which is the scattered straw. 
also like that this brayer has the little feet stand so you can set it down and you don't have to worry about, you know, getting mucky muck on it. Oh, this is very pigmenty. I must not have used this one much. And we're just gonna go here and roll that on. Now it doesn't look like much, um, and that kind of makes me nervous, but I think that's how it goes. Let's go this way. That's pretty. <laughs> we'll just set that, we'll just set that aside for now. Okay. And now all I'm gonna do to create a background is take my paper, place it on, and just press, okay? Not only is this a chance to show off my manicure, just, I'm sorry, nails are my other hobby. I've painted this color three weeks in a row. I love it so much. Um, all right, we're just, I guess, I don't wanna lift it up too soon, so I'm putting lots of nice pressure on here using the sides of my hands because it hurts to do that. I guess I could take a, my little stamp press too. Oh, that works. Just kind of go like that. It's probably plenty, but when I lift it up, hopefully you'll see a transfer that looks like that. That's really pretty. <laughs> I mean, it's a little more striated than I thought it would be, but you know what? I actually think that looks really good. Now, can I depth it up a little more? Huh, I could. Wow, that looks really good. I mean, that's just, and that's the thing that I think is so fun about using a gel press is that you're gonna get looks that are very different. That is not very blended into the next, but you know what? I actually think I'm gonna keep it as is. I'm gonna clean this up with just a little bit of water, go rinse this off, and then we're gonna move on. Next, I'm going to cut a few of these out because I'm going to stack them for some dimension. I'm going to use my Anna Griffin Empress machine and I'm gonna go, that's that. I'm gonna have a shim because that's gonna help add pressure and I'll go like this and I'll go run that through and see how it cuts. All right, let's take a look while that is doing its thing. Well, that looks good. That looks good. Now, come here, come here, come here. Lift. Ooh, I'm gonna bend it. I think I'm gonna bend it off like that. There we go. Okay, now I'm gonna get all the little innards out. Come here now, come here. Okay, I gotcha, I gotcha. Here, let's, let's do that. We like this guy better. There we go. All right, cuts look great. And you are releasing the hounds. Okay, come here. It's very detailed in here, so I don't wanna I don't wanna muck it up, but I'm gonna lift. Actually, cover your ears. There we go. There we go. Okay, so now what I have is that. Oh, I didn't know it was gonna cut that way. For some reason, <laughs> I thought it was gonna do the whole Okay, that's even better because now what I can do is I could actually cut one more of these out for dimension, but how pretty is this gonna be over the top of that? It's gonna be very subtle. Oh, I like that. Okay, let me cut out another panel. I'm going to, I might have to actually put this in a book just so it stays nice and flat. And then I'm going to glue two together and I think I'm gonna trim them down. So, just so that I have that nice little panel. All right. Hold tight. All right, I actually changed my mind. I don't wanna stack this. You know what I wanna do? I wanna take the biggest die from A2 layers, and let me make sure that should be four by, oh, that is that size. Okay, yep, I'm gonna to have to find a way to trim this larger. Okay, hold tight. Okay, this is what happens when you have something new. I actually need to cut this from a panel that's already trimmed for the front of my card. <laughs> Gosh, the, the, oh, Kathy, you are always thinking. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do that because then it's gonna be much easier to turn this into the background for my card. And now, I hope I have this trimmed right. I think I do. We're gonna hold this down. We're gonna, well, now I feel like I'm not centered. We're gonna tape it. Let me measure this again. I think I'm off. <laughs> Okay, hold on. We go. No, four and a quarter. 
by five and a half. We're gonna be perfect. Okay, I'm gonna line it up like that. I'm gonna tape it. All right, we're gonna tape that there and we're gonna tape that at the bottom. That's what we needed to do. Because there be, I mean, I would not be able to, yeah, never mind. Okay, here's what we're gonna do though. We're gonna put this back on. This side presses in here. I'm using the shim just to get that really nice crisp cut metal. You now will run it through. All right, hold tight. Okay, that makes, <laughs> makes a lot more sense. See, this is what happens with something new. You don't always know, right, what exactly is gonna happen if you're playing with something for the first time. And that's that's oftentimes what I am doing. So let's take you off. And do that, loosen things up a little. Okay. Now I can pop all these things out. Okay. Then I have my outline. Okay, this makes this is starting to make more sense. And then I do this because it loosens, right? We're loosening the patented technique. It's fun. Throw your craft supplies. Okay, come on now. Boop, boop, boop. Get out. I'm just trying. Oh, when I say I'm a highly trained professional, do I really mean it? I think I do. I just don't want to bend anything. All right, we're coming. We're coming out. There we go. That's what we wanted. Okay, I can poke out my little innards here. And then what I will do is I'm gonna make a note card because on that note card, I am going to adhere that panel. So I'm gonna make my note card out of a lighter weight, but look at that. That's what I wanted. Okay, let's, let's trim this down too. I think what I will do is I'll take a little pencil mark just so that I kind of know the general crop that I wanna take is up here and over here like that. And then I'll just go grab my paper trimmer and trim it down to be four and a quarter by five and a half. Let's trim a little here and I'll just go, I guess here. I just wanna make sure I get the general amount that and now I can just do uh, four and a quarter. Did I get pencil mark in there? Hold on. Oh, Kathy. There we go. Now we'll just do four and a quarter by five and a half. And then I know that this will be very nice for my card front. I may go a little smaller with it. I just want to make sure that that is gonna fit in there. I might take a tiny sliver off. And when I say like maybe less than a 16th, like that. That way, once I get this on the note card, I know that it's completely contained. All right, let's get the note card. All right, before we do that, you know what could be really cute to add a little more to this? You know, a little, a little spatter on here, a little spatter, splatter, all the goodness. Now I'm gonna put this out of the way so it does not get it on there, but I thought, what if I just took, you know, a little of the darker colors. So here we'll just smush a little of that. I don't need much. And maybe a little of the marigold, like that. I think I do need to re-ink these. I have many re-inkers, but I, I don't know when it's time to do it sometimes. All right, I think I'm gonna take, you know what, I want a smaller brush. I love my fan brush, but sometimes I like to go a little smaller and just because they just give me little tiny babies. And this might not do a whole, oh no, I can see a little there. That's cute. Just a little, right? And then we'll clean off this brush, pick up some of the marigold, down here. I don't even think it's gonna look that different, but I just thought a little extra something would add, uh, let's go up here too, to the look. That's all I'm gonna do. It's just a little tiny bit. We'll let that kind of do its oxidey thing. I'll clean this up and then we'll make the note card. 
I've got a piece of the Nina Solar White Classic Crest. This is an 80 pound and I felt like I don't need to have it be 110 because, uh, you know, it's I'm gonna be putting extra layers onto this. So let's fold this down. So this folds down to be a USA2, which is four and a quarter inches by five and a half inches. I'm gonna press this down with my Teflon bone folder. Oh, actually, you know what? I need this back because, let's make sure this is the right size, and I think this is probably dry. Yeah, there wasn't much liquid on there. This is gonna go right on here, so let's first make sure that it's basically the right size. I made it a little narrower on purpose just so that when I put that frame on, it will perfectly encapsulate. I'm just gonna go cut a real sliver, like half of a 16th, is that 1 32nd, off the top. That way, this will not stick out at all. So here's what we're gonna do. I guess I don't need to worry about this as much, but I'm going to add adhesive, and I'm just using Gina K Designs tape runner for this here. Do a few in the center. Oh, my tape's getting low. Always makes me so sad. I did order more. I'm getting low. Okay. Now, I'll just line this up right onto the panel. Like this. Does it need to be? Now, hold on. Well, no. I think we're going to be fine. Pick you up. I got to do it standing up. Forgive my head. I'll try to come at it from the side, but we'll go like that and make sure that that is exactly how I wanted it with just a little extra white on the sides. That way okay, we are not going to have any of that stick out when I put this on the top, which is going to match almost perfectly. I may have to trim a little off the side. Let's see. Well, let's glue it down first because if I go right here, I do have a little on the outside edge. I'm going to trim that just a tiny bit before I add my adhesive. Sometimes when you die cut something, it can pull the paper a little. So I'm going to say this part is coming off just to make sure that this has its complete side-to-side -side coverage. Oh yeah, that's gonna be great. Now I'm gonna use spray adhesive on this because I really need it to stick hard and fast, but also I don't want any oozing happening because of the oxide. So I'm gonna spray this off camera. I always wear a mask when I'm doing it and I spray it away from my workspace. So hold tight. Okay, I sprayed this. I still have a mask on so I don't inhale it. And now what we'll do, well, you know what? I think I'm gonna have to, well, I just got schmutz on there. Oh no, oh boy. All right, we'll have to see if we can get it off. Hold on, something was on my tweezers and that makes me really sad. All right, well, Kathy, is it gonna go? Is it gonna work? Is it gonna be a hot, hot mess? Maybe, I don't know what that is up there. Oh, I'll take my mask off. So now, I'm gonna pull this out and just burnish. There was something on my tweezers and it actually, <laughs> I always use different tweezers for, uh, look at that. <laughs> now, here, let's see. Can we get it off with an adhesive eraser? Oh, <laughs> well. Okay, keep going, Kath. Well, you know, they're not all winners. Okay, that really bums me out. What is on there? It looks like someone was picking off like um, candle wicks. Oh, Kathy. All right, well, I do have one option. Now look, that's just it. See, look how cute that is. Okay, is there anything else I could do on that? You know, I do have this please cover your ears i'm gonna i'm just gonna turn this on and try to sand off some of the paper okay it's actually kind of working hold tight 
Okay. Now, if that hadn't happened, I think this is the cutest thing ever, but you know, sometimes these things happen. I could take a white gel pen. Let me see if that will work. And again, burnish so that is nicely adhered. I don't regret my decision to use the spray glue. They're not all they're not always going to work. That that's the, that's the takeaway from today. Let me get something shiny cuz I think this could use a little. Just for fun, I think I will try my gel pen. Is this even working? I feel like I feel like sometimes it works so well and then sometimes it doesn't. But let's see. What if I just put some white over that? I mean, it's better, it's better than just screaming black. See that? I'll let that dry <laughs> and then I'll put another layer on. Oi, oi. Okay, let's get a placement that looks nice on the sequence. All right very low on this particular style but I think for this it would just be nice to have you know like a little little shine we're gonna have some big ones we're gonna have some medium size well now see I don't know about that how about that that and the little guys up here like that that's cute come down here with a medium friend Make sure it's cup word. Yes, it is. And one more little friend down in here like that. It's really simple, right? Nothing, nothing too wild. We're just going to have, I guess, I think that's nice. Just a few little bits of shine there. I don't know if it needs more. I don't know if this is an awkward placement. Like maybe it should try to span across a little more like that. You know what I mean? Just so that it's not all like blobbed in the center. Yeah, maybe I'll do that. Also, I think this looks better in the light, in real light than it does in the light under my studio lights, but you'll see in the photo. It's just a little more saturated. All right, let's boop it up. Just a few. I'm using my liquid glue, boop, my connect glue from Gina K Designs in my squeeze bottle, boop. One right in the center, boop. One over here, boop. And a little friend down here, and boop. And as soon as this dries a little more, I am gonna put more white on it. But that's my finished card project. That is my something old, the brayer. <laughs> something new, this super sweet die cut. Something borrowed, the color palette and something oxide-y, something I had forgotten about for a while, but it's actually really cute. Those brayer backgrounds, the thing that's kind of cool about them, and I'm gonna do this one more time while we're here, they're gonna be different every time, right? You just don't know what you're gonna get. And I kind of love that. That's not bad, right? That covers it up mostly. I mean, if someone got the card, I don't think they would, they might just think that was something that happened in the mail. Love how that turned out. And again, I hope this inspires you to apply this formula to what you have on hand, combined with something that's new in your craft room. That's the goal of this series. You can find links to all of the products I used in today's video in the YouTube description box. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, I'd love to have you, so hit that subscribe button and be sure to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss the next time I post. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day. To see the first video I did in this series, check out the thumbnail I have below along with another video next to it that you may enjoy.